All right, I'm going to go over some things that you need to have with you if you drive your car during a blizzard. And actually, I have this in my Jeep at all times, even whether I'm in a blizzard or if I'm just driving in the mud, sand, it could be warm, whatever. And you'll notice the wind's picking up down here, even on the way below the south of the storm. But I'm originally a Yankee. And uh, first, I want to tell you something right off the bat. Um, I know a lot of people don't get snow tires for the winter time, right? They got all season tires. They figure, okay, I'm not going to lecture you on snow tires or whatever. I'm not even going to tell you about chains. I'm going to tell you something simple right from the get-go. If you get something out of this video, take a tire pump with you and pressure gauge. Many times, you see, I have a pressure gauge. I also have a tire repair kit. I have a hand tire pump. The electric ones are slower and they're not as reliable in some ways. I like the hand tire pump because if I ever have to get out of a situation, the first thing I do is deflate the tires down about 15, 20 pounds. You will find that that works in sand, mud, snow, no matter what. That is the simplest thing you can do. Everybody ignores it. There have been people that, I'm gonna probably be long in this video, if unfortunately I usually have a lot of information to give. But there have been people that actually have died out in the desert. Now, I'm talking about a blizzard condition here, but same type of thing. Low traction, they got stuck in the sand. And you know how the vehicle, four-wheel drive vehicle, was driven out? They deflated the tires to about 10, 12 pounds, and it got right out of the rut, and it drove away. And the people that were there died. So that's one thing you can do in the snow. But you got to watch. You don't go too far down. Um... Depending on, the tire, depending on the vehicle, like this is a lightweight Jeep, I got 22 in the front, 26 in the back stock. I could probably go down to 15, no problem, or 12. On a car, maybe maybe just below 20 pounds, you know, most cars. That's simple. Number two, uh, I did a video on this. These are the Cleed cable chains. These, these actually go on in about five minutes. This yellow thing here... Um, it actually, sl I, I, I have to point to another video I did on it. The first time I put them on, it took five minutes. They're unique. They're easy to do. Um, the other thing is, um, excuse me, these are the cable chains. These are not, these are the Laclede's right here. Those are the Laclede's. They took five minutes. These cable chains, they fit all size cars. These took me about 30 minutes to put on. But I got two sets, one for the back, one for the front. Another thing to keep with you is, um, well, I'll say in order, uh, sleeping bag. This is a $20 made in USA sleeping bag, not designed for extreme cold weather, designed to about cool weather, but if you're in a car, you got a sleeping bag, it is way better than almost any overgarment you're gonna wear. Plus, you can just put it over you like a blanket. It's 20 bucks, it's compact, it's probably enough to even cover two people when you've got it spread out because it's not one of those mummy type sleeping bags. It opens up like a big rectangle. That's good to have in a car. Um, snow shovel. Snow shovel and also an e-tool. An e-tool opens up like this. Military entrenching tool. Locks up like this. And you can use it to chip away ice. That's a good Canadian made snow shovel. I keep duct tape. Empty can for gasoline. Can of water. Can of starting fluid. Sometimes I don't know, your, your uh, car could get ice in the, um, could be sputtering because of water in a tank or something like that, stall out. You know, hey, start, starting fluid might help you out. It could. I always keep a can in there. The other thing is, I keep extra cell phone batteries. Even though I have the cell phone where it plugs into the jack and have, it could charge up, I get two, uh, two extra cell, cell phone batteries with me. This is a Johnny Warmer. Uh, I could probably point to a link on this. Probably a lot, well, it's actually the Zippo brand. Um, you light them, you fill them up with lighter fluid. It's got a very slow burn, and it, it stays like warm, like a hand warmer, for about eight to twelve hours. Um, it's a great device, actually. Um, I don't know why it's not that popular today. A lot of them use the electric ones. The electric ones are nowhere near as good as the old style. And actually, the original Johnny Warmers were the best, I think. But the Zippo is not a bad brand. That's what I got here. You want to have, um, this is like a hoodie off of a uh, parka. Now, I'm wearing a field jacket right now, but you probably want to wear something like with a parka and one of these things. This thing, when you cinch it down around the front with this fur, um, it's very warm. 
I'm originally from up north. Actually, I was up there in 95, 96 when he had the uh, record snow in northern New Jersey, 104, 106 inches. Um, so that's this will get your vehicle out really quick a lot of times, and you won't even have to worry about standing there and getting stuck. But you want the snow shovel because you want to keep uh, snow away from your exhaust pipe if you're stuck in one place. You want to make sure the car is ventilated. I also have um, uh, tools in the car. This is a solar panel, extra can of oil, extra fan belt. And also I want to mention about these things. These are very important because... Um, um, uh, you, you, you got one of these really heavy duty trash bags like I'm showing back to the shovel there or just underneath the sleeping bag you can put that on now it might accumulate it will accumulate if you sweat in there it'll accumulate moisture but it can work as a heat barrier it can help you can put it on real loose and you know have some openings on the bottom and, and below it's another layer of insulation it, it can create an air pocket that can actually keep you warm. That stupid trash bag. I found that out from riding motorcycles, riding bicycles, just being outside in the weather. Uh, I used to just take a trash bag with me, rump, crumple it up, put it in my pocket, just in case. And a lot of times it saved my ass. It was like an impromptu um, cold weather garment. Of course, I mentioned duct tape, duct tape right here. Um, and I like using the uh, LED flashlights. Um, these are, uh, this is a good one. It's actually cheap, but it's no electronics. It's using uh, rechargeable Nikon high quality batteries. I also have tow chain tow rope. And uh, in a Jeep, I just have a come along. You know what a come along is? It's a ratchet puller. Uh, I also have, I have that in my El Camino, the uh, rope come along, which uses, I have 200 feet of rope with it. You can pull any length. <coughs> but. <clears throat> Your one problem is you'll have, I think if you have all this, pretty much no matter where you are, you're going to get out pretty quick. The problem is if you're stuck in a traffic jam and everybody else is stuck, well, you're stuck too. So make sure you have the water. Make sure you have um, the Johnny Warmer too. Make sure you have this hoodie, the sleeping bag, and you know the lighter fluid to relight the uh, Johnny Warmer and stuff. Um, which also includes, which also you have to have a lighter with you for that. Um, but sometimes if there's just a few cars stuck, if you have all this stuff, you might get everybody out. But do remember the stuff about low tire pressure will get you out in most situations. Also want to make a footnote here real quick. I've been using this uh, Perfection kerosene heater with uh, ultra low sulfur diesel fuel in my house. Uh, 24 hours a day for the last several days. Uh, this has been burning now 13, 14 hours, and it's got a quarter tank left. That's with the ultra-low sulfur diesel. Now, if you got a really big car, maybe you can keep one of these in there. <laughs> no, I wouldn't recommend that too much. But um, so that's uh, I guess that's about it. You know, you want to have your snow, um, your snow brushes and stuff like that. Your ice scrapers. Make sure your heating system's in good condition, which all this shit is in this thing. And uh, but basically, uh, most of the time, people just get stuck on a hill. If you just lower that tire pressure a little bit, uh, you probably make it up there. I don't. You know, I never see a video on that. Somebody's gonna see this video and probably make a video about that. But I want you to get that as a number one hint because that's the simplest thing to do. Usually, people can't. They get stuck in a rut. They get stuck in one little area. It's one little spot. Like the roads are mainly clear. Just lower that tire pressure. Don't like get it down to zero. That's why you want to have a gauge. You know, maybe you want to bring it down to 20, try it. Maybe get it down to 15, try it. Maybe you can get it down to 12, try it. But then pump it back up once you get out. Don't go driving off with 12 pounds of oil, <laughs> air pressure in your tires. Or you might DB those rims, you know. Um, but uh, it's right off the top of my head, that's about the best I could think of. Actually, I always have this in the Jeep at all times. And uh, I know a lot of little tricks. And I can tell you, I also put a video out about some of the best stuff for cold weather is mill spec, like a field jacket with a liner, parka with a liner. If you have a field jacket with a liner, parka with a liner, hunting pants, brush pants, Sorel snow boots, and uh, mittens, scarves, all that type of stuff. Uh, you're definitely not going to freeze to death, especially with one of those, too, because as long as you stay put in a car and if you're stuck on a you know, major highway or something like that and it's even eight hours, you're not going to freeze to death. You're not gonna have a problem. You know, it'll be 
it might be a pain in the ass waiting it out and the other thing is if you have a lot of cell phone batteries you could stay entertained pretty much see what you keep abreast of things uh, talk to people whatever the hell it is that's why I like keeping I always keep extra cell phone batteries with me I have the these are the long life batteries this is the, the original one is the red one there's like a long life one underneath that and I have a long life one underneath the phone so I can constantly be recharging them and uh, just swap them out swap them out swap them out and uh, you know having basically three cell phone batteries gives me a hell of a lot of freaking life on that phone especially with internet access so you know that can help you while the way to time but uh, you know basically that's a quick update I'm probably leaving some stuff out that's why I'm kind of delaying here because oh make sure you have good tires but uh, these are Firestone Winter Force probably one of your better ones directional snow tires this thing's got a locker in the back of it which means both wheels lock up this thing would probably go like a son of a bitch I don't think I would get I don't think I get stuck with this because I had this up through uh, over two feet of snow up in Jersey and uh, the bumper was uh, pushing the snow the other thing is you want to make sure even on your vehicle you have enough lighting like this is uh, these are fog lights which will help you out people see you coming down the road and the other thing is in low visibility situations since I don't even have a third eye on this thing I have the reflectors up here on the top of the hard top so you know say you're parked on the side of the road and the snow's piling up and it's covering up your lights down there um, that's a little excessive maybe but I always found it the more safety conscious you are, there's always somebody that makes up for, for the difference of your safety conscious with their lack of safety conscious. But, you know, Murphy's Law is always there. Watch out for Murphy's Law. <laughs> I'll just leave you with that. Watch out for Murphy's Law because no matter what you do, there's always something you forget. But if you don't do nothing, you're going to be screwed. So, sure some helpful tents. Yeah, and one more thing, jumper cables, forgot about that, these are lightweight jumper cables, but uh, I got a lightweight vehicle here, it's a 1300cc Jeep, so anyway, uh, jumper cables, that's a very important thing, dead batteries, um, as a matter of fact, I just want to make a note here, because electric cars, uh, in the cold weather, they got less than half the range, because the batteries are, it's that hard on the batteries, so if you're below zero weather or something like that, below zero um, Fahrenheit, Look, in other words, zero, is, uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit is around 17 minus 18 uh, Celsius. Well, you know, your battery is going to take a lot of toll there, and you might want to have jumper cables. It's definitely a necessary thing. Simple, but uh, throw them in the back there. You forget about them. I actually forgot about them right there, but I have them. I have them. <laughs> I would remember it if I needed them, right?